What is up guys, Top Tier Yu-Gi-Oh here, and in this video I've got some brave tiny test hands because I think this deck is actually really good this format, but it is difficult and challenging to play. And I think it helps to see the deck in action, to see what it can do, to see some of the combo lines and options that you have, and that's what I'm trying to do in this video. So let's go ahead and get into it, you guys know how test hand videos work by now. So I've already power shuffled the deck, I'm just going to do a couple more shuffles just to randomize the deck a little bit more. But again, I think this is one of the better decks right now. It is extremely powerful. And when the combos go through, you generally are going to be winning the game. It's just a matter of playing through hand traps and understanding what your inboards are and how to generate follow-up because that's this deck's biggest issue. Sometimes you'll have your combo, but you won't have a follow-up. And the Tiny cards are some of the worst follow-up cards in the game right now. Whereas other decks are using like DPE as a follow-up or Adventure as a follow-up, your Tinnies are worse than them. So you have to figure out other ways to do so. And usually it is the adventure engine, but not always. So let's go ahead and get into this first hand. We're starting with Ash, Bell, Ash, Nib, and Vessel. Um, so we bricked going first, but going second, this would be a really good hand. If we we're going second, our sixth card would be Griffin Rider, which also is not very good in this hand. So we're gonna actually just mulligan this one. That's rough. Maybe I just didn't shuffle good enough. I did power shuffle, but you know. Uh, this is a 55 card deck with 17 hand traps. You're bound to draw hands like that, you know, some of the time, but at least you're able to stop the opponent. And I do think that's a big uh, testament of where the format is right now. For all the decks play so many hand traps, you really just end up hand trapping each other for multiple turns in almost every single game. So for this, ooh, this looks exactly the same. Never mind, now it's good. Now it's even better. So <laughs> in this hand, we've got pretty much exactly what we need. We've got. Well, one going second, multiple hand traps, which is good. But going first, we have access to multiple monsters as well as tuners, which can get us to needle fiber and get a lot of our plays going. And so what we want to do with this hand is definitely start with the right of Adamasir, activate right. That will get us to our uh, adventure token. It will also get us to fateful adventure. There we go, fateful adventure. And we have a couple of other options as well with this hand. And so we could very easily just go for a needle fiber by summoning any of our tuners. However, we also could get Griffin on board first. And so we don't wanna discard any of these cards in our hand, we'd rather keep them all. So I think it would be good in this hand to go for Draco back first and discard the Draco back. However, the downside is that one, you lose the Draco back forever. Like there's no way to get it back out of the grave and Draco back is a great disruption card, not disruption, but a great board breaking card to follow up with and so i do if possible i do like to keep draco back in rotation the other downside of going for like the full adventure stuff first is that you can no longer you know once you resolve uh faithful adventure you can't use it to chain block your needle fiber however you will have griffin on board but it's much better to chain block your your help than it is to use griffin to negate something because then you lose that griffin and that's extra material that you could be using for your combos so that's something to keep in mind as well so from here, what I would do is just special summon the Stana. And again, I don't want to do it, but use the Fateful Effect to search for Draco back. It takes forever to find anything in a deck this large. After that, use Fateful's Effect, using that to search for a Griffin Rider. And then we're going to discard the Draco back for the effect. Uh, yeah, Draco back effect equipped to the token doesn't really matter because we're gonna be uh, Synchroing the token away anyways, and this is a going first combo But from here you can just summon any of our hand traps It just depends on you know which one we want to get rid of the Valor or the Ash Blossom And it depends on the matchup as well. And so while Valor and Nib is a really really good combo Depending on the matchup you might want to keep the Ash in hand because this can negate a branded fusion or a fusion destiny But you know branded fusions a big one right now and so, but Nib is actually bad in the Despia matchup because they don't summon that many times. And so maybe it's better to just lean more into like having that dead, uh, having that dead Nib and then the Ash to get the, uh, the fusion versus keeping the Valor for the Nib Valor combo. So this is when kind of reading the opponent, reading their deck comes up scouting. It definitely helps to have some sort of read, but I guess going in blind, I would want to keep the Ash because yeah, Branded Fusion's really, really good. So, uh, normal summon the Valor. Zones don't matter. I know it's a little, little squished on the field right now, but it all works out somehow. 
we will ooh, did I just put my hand in the grave uh oh yeah let's not do that <laughs> um so link both of these into a Halky Fibrax Halk effect and whenever you're resolving Halk what you summon depends on your board. Like if you have a level seven and a level four, you don't have to go Despot play because one, Aurorodon summons out three tokens and you don't have space for three tokens and Despot. But two, it uh, if you can save the Despot play for later, that really helps your longevity because you can use your Red Rose now and then on your follow-up, Hulk, uh, Hulk into your Despot and do that play as well. So that's really, really good to hold it if you can. However, if your opponent, let's say, has a ash blossom a veil or imperm or something for the needle you would use the griffin to negate that shuffle griffin back in deck so now you only have one monster in main monster zone so now you could go despot but assuming you know opponent has nothing we're gonna go for red rose so with that we will summon out red rose dragon off of the hauk and we want to immediately get a negate on board so right now we have an omni negate we never want to not have an omni negate or else then we just get nibbed so we will immediately synchro red rose and that into our copy of baron de fleur next red rose will trigger red rose will be summoning out the rocks rose dragon rocks rose will eventually get us basil rose shoot but first we got to find the rocks rose long young is actually not supposed to be in my deck so i'm just going to take that out but there we go. Rocks Rose Dragon, get summoned, add Basil. So now from here, what we can do is token and Rocks Rose go into Yazi. Draco back falls off. Use Baron effect to destroy the Yazi. If I can pick it up, Yazi's effect will trigger. And so in our hand, once again, we have Ash, Nib, Basil. Yazi can go into a Taya, and Taya gets us a few more plays from there. So activate Taya's effect, Taya's effect, banish the Yazi, summon out a Sword Soul token, Yazi plus, or not Yazi, but Taya plus token, gets us to Chi Shao. Then we'll activate Chi Shao, chain link one, Taya, chain link two, if our opponent had an ogre, they would they would have used it by now, hopefully. And so, the, I guess chain blocking isn't super big here. They're just two from deck effects, but force a habit making Taya chain link two. So with that, we will send Adara to the graveyard, and then we will add a copy of Blackout to our hand. And so the board we'll be ending on will be this is the hand, we'll, we'll set the black out. And so this is hand, Ash, Nib, so two interruptions, plus the Baron for three, Chi Shao for four, Blackout for five. Five interruptions with that starting hand. And then also we have really, really good follow-up because we do have the Hauk as well. So Hauk can get us to a Formula Synchron, which can draw us into something else. So let's say we activate Hauk's effect banish on the opponent's turn, of course. We could go Formula. Formula could get us into a... Ooh, another hand trap. So that could be the move. Something else that we could do is formula for, or not formula, but help for riser. Riser could send something to help us on next turn, such as an Ashina or anything else that we might want engraved. Maybe snow. That's really good follow up with a blackout. And so definitely keep that in mind as well. Follow up is very important in this deck. And if we felt confident enough between one, two, three, four, five. I would definitely go for the riser dump snow because that gives us follow up on next turn by banishing the blackout and grave we have otter which can add back the taya if we banish that off of the snow and then we also have more disruption for future turns with the snow plus we haven't used the despot play yet and so anything plus basil rose shoot equals a combo next turn so let's say our whole board gets clear cleared worst case scenario everything's gone and we did i did i pull the riser out yeah Let's say we risered, risered for snow. Worst case scenario, right? Everything's gone. What we could do very easily is we could activate the basil rose shoot. Basil rose shoot could summon back rocks rose, right? Rocks rose effect. 
this can add us red rose so now we've got two monsters haven't even normal summoned yet we, if we want it we could just normal summon make Hauk do the despot play that's an option something else that we could do activate snow right activate snow banishing blackout Taya whatever else we want most of this stuff is useless at this point let's see was that seven one two three four five six seven cool so the main thing here is that you want to banish the Taya and the blackout this will trigger blackouts effect when banished so summon out the snow blackout effect summon sword soul token and then now that we have sword soul token on board we have a non-effect monster we can activate otara's graveyard effect add back that taya that we banished still have a normal summon i mean obviously we could do stuff with this but like let's say before we even normal summon opponent has a face down card we could do this go into Yazi, pop a card, right? That's fine. We still have Sword Soul Token Yazi, and well, if we used Yazi's effect, this wouldn't be on board anymore. But okay, yeah, let's say we use it. Yazi pop something. Yazi summon out. Uh, let's say Vashuda. Or Mo Yi actually. Mo Yi would be good too. That gets us a draw. Vashuda. If we had other cards we wanted to clear on the opponent's board, Vashuda would be good. If not, uh. Mo Yi is actually really good here. So we could go Mo Yi, reveal the Taya, get another token. Let's see, this is it. They're both Sword Soul tokens, yeah. So Synchro token, Mo Yi into, let's say, Faxia. Clear two more cards off the opponent's side of the field. We could do Chain Link 1 Mo Yi, Chain Link 2 Faxia. Mo Yi draws us a card, draw into Foolish. Oh, this could get us back into our adventure stuff by dumping an enchantress. Still have an even normal summon though. So we have a token, we could dump Ashina, use that effect. Or once again, we could just steal from here, activate the Taya, banish the Mo Yi, or Chi Xiao, either one, get another Sword Soul token, synchro that into Draco Berserker. That's a play. Activate the Foolish. Assuming we've cleared the opponent's board by now, this is just game, because we can dump Enchantress, banish that, search right, activate right. Oh no! Going too fast. Activate right, this gets us Adventure Token at 2,000, and then that's uh, over eight. Uh, no, it's not actually. Baxia effect, destroy token. We, we could get a Fateful too, if we play two. I personally play two, but get back to Taya. Now it's 8,000. So like this deck can easily just clear boards like going second or on the following turns as long as you set up that follow-up with your initial play. And so hopefully that wasn't too disorganized. I hope it didn't, you know, confuse anybody, but there's a lot that you could do on that turn too. All right, moving into the next hand. Once again, we're going to shuffle the deck a little bit because that first hand we drew was full of hand traps. That last hand we drew, three hand traps. Hopefully the next hand we get a little bit more uh, combo-y. I mean, the last one's combo, obviously. This deck combos with anything, but hopefully we get, like, actual combo. Not normal summon hand trap combo. Alright. Let's do one final cut. YouTuber luck coming up. Ghost Mourner, Ash, Red Rose, Bushuda, and another Ghost Mourner. So, this hand's, you know, this hand's decent. We got double Ghost Mourner. That kind of is weird, but if our opponent has a token collector, this would be really good. But... Obviously, the play here has to be activate Vashuda effect, summon itself, normal summon the Red Rose, and then go for our Baron. Activate Red Rose effect to summon out Rox Rose. Rox Rose will search Basil Rose Shoot. I'm just going to get them both out of the deck at the same time. Let's see, Rox Rose, Basil Rose Shoot. Add that to hand. So we'd activate the Basil Rose Shoot, bring back the Red Rose Dragon. Red Rose plus Rox Rose equals Halki Fibrax. Halki Fibrax will get out the Despot. And this hand isn't one where you can really play around stuff. This is just a hand where you just play. 
like you just solitaire the hand out. If your opponent's got hand traps, they got hand traps. One thing that always comes up is the question of whether or not to negate the hand trap on the Hulk. So if they go for Hulk here, do you let it resolve in fear of if they have Nib? Because if they, let's say, Ash your Hulky Fibrax and you negate it, you have no protection for Nib now. So you go through your whole board, you get Nibbed, you pretty much just lose everything and you're sitting on hand traps pass. That's obviously much less than ideal. However, uh, what happens if you if you do negate that is you put it you put your opponent on like better have that nib or better have that second hand trap and depending on their deck building it can determine uh your risk tolerance in that case and so if you're playing against like a 60 card deck chances are you're playing against a deck with a lot of hand traps like based cybers outlets prank kids maybe not the best idea if you're playing against a 40 card deck there's a chance you'd be playing against phantom knights or virtual world which typically don't do don't play too many hand traps and so you have to kind of take that risk there but also i find that when you do stop on just like the baron play like if let's say you negate their ash blossom on the hauk but then you don't want to continue in case they have nib so you stop at uh, baron plus hauk that's just not good enough in the current format so you just lose anyways so i think it's better to just play into the nib and if they have it they have it if not well you win so from here we will link the Despot 001 and the Hulk into a Roradon. This will get us to our three Mecha Phantom Beast tokens. One, two, and three. Triggering the Despot's effect to revive itself. Now from here we've got a lot of options. Now, we don't have Ashina and Grave. We instead have Vishuda. So that changes what we can do. And so we don't want to make a Riser play, or, or not Riser for Snow at least, because the levels don't match up. If we go Riser for Snow, we're using... Uh, we're using pretty much all of our tokens and then if we dump snow riser becomes level three and level three riser plus level three token does not really work very well uh we could just go straight into yazi pop the yazi and then continue with our sword soul plays that's an option as well again because we don't have the ashina we can't go herald because we don't have any other tuners that we can put on board because we already committed our normal summon and so instead, what I actually think the best play in this scenario is, I've seen a lot of people do it differently. I've seen a lot of people just go straight into Yazi, but I think the better play in this scenario is to synchro the two tokens and the Despot into a copy of Shooting Riser. But instead of sending Snow, which people sort of have a type of functional fixedness with this deck I've seen, a lot of people just think it only sends Snow. But instead what we can send is a Water Enchantress. And by dumping Water Enchantress, it reduces Yazi's, or I'm sorry, it reduces Riser's level by three, making it a level four tuner, which works very well with the token. And so now we can synchro the Riser Dragon and the token into a copy of Yazi. Now Baron can pop the Yazi. This gets Yazi's graveyard effect. And that will allow us to summon out our copy of Taya. We don't have any worms in hand, unfortunately. So Taya is the move here. If I can find the soul right on top of the deck, wow. So go for Taya, activate Taya's effect. The only worm we have in Grave is, well, we guess we have Vashuda, but <laughs> we want Vashuda in Grave. So banish out the Yazi. This gets us to our Sword Soul token. Synchro the Taya and the token into our copy of Chishao. And now we'll have T Shao Chain Link 1, Taya Chain Link 2. Taya will dump out a. Let's go with an Adara. Just because, once again, Adara is what allows us to have follow up in a lot of cases. So we want to definitely get that into the grave. So on our next turn. Oh, and search the blackout. Ooh, that shuffle was ugly. But yeah, search the blackout as well for the Chi Shao. So black out the hand, Adara to the graveyard. And so we're gonna be ending on a board of, let's see, set blackout. So one, two, three, four, five disruptions once again. Very tough for most decks to play through. And then on the following turn, because we sent Enchantress to the grave, we've got really, really good follow-up. And if Chi Shao can banish out the Taya for its effect, what we can do on the next turn is uh, Enchantress get right, right, get token and fateful. Now that we have a non-effect monster, Taya can, or sorry, Adara can add back the Taya that we would hopefully banish off the Chi Shao, giving us more follow up as well. So we'd have Wright, Taya, and whatever else that gets us to. Oh, and we got Vashuda as well in Grave. Ooh, we are ready for turn two. 
So this is a pretty strong board as well. Even though the hand didn't look that strong on its own, it's just Vashuda Red Rose. Really, as long as you get to your despot play, a lot of times you end up with a bunch of disruptions. And because this deck can play so many hand traps, you're gonna have a couple on top as well. So this was a very solid hand. All right, moving into this next hand, we've got Ogre, Adara, Ashina, Ashina, and Blackout. So interesting hand for sure. We've got one hand trap, which is definitely less than ideal if we were going second, but we do have Ashina Adara, which is always a really, really good play. Plus the Blackout, which is, you know, fine. It's usually better to have a different card because we can search it, but this does give us a little bit of leeway uh, in the future because instead of searching it, we can just search a, a second Sword Soul monster for the follow-up on turn two. So in some ways this is bad, but in others ways it can be okay. And so the play for this hand is to go for Special Summon Ashina. And from here we could just Normal Summon the Adara and go for a, uh, a Needle Fiber. However, you don't want to use your Normal Summon if you don't have to. And so instead what we could do is, again, Special Summon the Ashina. Ashina go into a Monk. Now that we don't have any effect monsters anymore, effect the Special Summon Adara. Both of these can go into the Halki Fibrax, and then Halki Fibrax gets us into our Aurora Down plays. And so what we will do is summon out our Despot 001. No point in even shuffling at this point, but uh, both of these will go into Aurora Down. Aurorodon can get us to our three lovely Karibo tokens, and that will trigger the Despot 001. And so here we have a lot of options because we have uh, this setup, plus we have Ashna Adara already engraved. So this is really good because when we get to Yazi eventually, we we uh, one, we already have a Worm in hand, or also a Sword Soul card in hand. So we've got stuff for Moyi, but also, uh, we could add things back to our hand with the Adara already. And so we have a ton of options here. It just depends on what we want our turn two to look like and how we want to play around hand traps because obviously getting to this point, if all of this resolves, we can assume they do not have uh, like Ash, Ogre, Nib, anything like that. If they had those cards, they would use them by now. And so from here, it's just setting up for turn two really. And so we have a couple of different ways we can set up for turn two. As we saw in that last combo, Riser can dump out a uh, Riser can dump Enchantress that sets us up for turn two. Another play that we could do is to um, I guess we already have Blackout, but another play you can do is to send Snow. Then Snow Blackout's also really powerful follow up. Uh, I think the play in this case would be to go for the uh, to go for the um, I just said it to go for the Enchantress because in that case you get follow up turn after turn after turn and we already have the blackout anyways so we're gonna have ways to you know trigger that and so what we can do with this is synchro two tokens and despot 001 into our riser dragon activate riser dragon's effect to send a copy of let's see water enchantress to the graveyard this is going to make Riser level four. And we also have a couple of other options here as well. And so, uh, we, again, we have a lot of options. We could go straight into Yazi here. We could also use that Ashina that we have engraved to summon out level four. That would allow us to go into a, um, like this is level four tuner. So we go level four, level four Chishao. That's already a play. And then that Chishao can get us to uh, different lines of combos as well. Or we could just do, you know, standard play and then use the Ashina later, because we have just so many options here. So uh, let's go ahead and actually just do that. So, or actually if we, so yeah, let's just go Riser token into, let's see, Yazi, and then Roradon effect pop the Yazi. This feels so weird because if the opponent was holding an Ash Blossom, we would get hard punished by Ash on the Yazi right now. That would be so bad. So, uh, Rordon pop the Yazi. This will get us to our Moyi. And now, when it comes to, let me shuffle a little bit more. Now, I'll, I'll go back into the deck anyways. But so for Moyi, this is our hand. We've got Ogre, Ashina, Blackout. You gotta reveal one of these two cards. 
I want to reveal the blackout because this deck only plays a single trap. Everybody knows it. If I set a card, they know it's blackout. But if I reveal the Ashina and then set a card, I reveal two cards to the opponent, which is just free information for them. And so we're going to reveal the blackout. That's going to get us our Sword Soul token. And then with that Sword Soul token, we can, let's see, let's go ahead and activate Ashina's effect. So use Ashina to, or sorry, yeah, Ashina, we'll use that to summon out another Adara from the deck. Let's see, this gets us to Adara. Now we can synchro the token and the Moi into our copy of Chishao. Now we can do, let's see, Chishao 2, Moi 1. We do not want to draw the Swords Old card. We probably won't, see? But, you know, just in case. So Chishao can search. Instead of searching Blackout because we already have it, we'll search Taya as follow up on the next turn. So search the Taya. Shuffle up, draw hand trap because we're so good. We play so many hand traps, the odds are that you draw a hand trap or adventure cards. Either one's good. From here, we will, I guess we have some options here. We could just set the blackout and then pass on like Chi Shao blackout, Ogre Ash, and then really, really good follow up next turn. And then in graveyard, again, we also have the enchanter. So really, really good follow up on next turn. The downside to this play though is that uh, all your cookies are on the board all your plays and so something else that we could do instead and what i was initially thinking actually was to synchro both of these into a chow fang and then end on chow fang blackout so chow fang blackout is useful because you can blackout tribute the chow fang of course or destroy the chow fang and then you get that disruption but then the chow fang will search you something else so we already have Ash Ogre, but it could also search as Ghost Bell. It can search as Moonlight or Ghost Mourner. It could search as Veiler. And so it gets us to another hand trap and that could be really powerful as well. Maybe much, like I'd rather have a Veiler than Chi Shao effect because Chi Shao can be dealt with much easier. Whereas the, there's nothing the opponent can do about a Veiler in hand. And so that's uh, an option as well. But either way, we're gonna be ending up on one, two, three four disruptions and really really good follow-up so pretty powerful hand as well but i think what this hand comes down to is that that one choice that we had when we had uh, very redundant to say in that regard but the choice we had at the point when we had god i cannot talk but when we had the three tokens auroradon and the despot so if you play herald do you go for herald and then ashina summon out adara make yazi or do you make the riser dump enchantress to set up for next turn and then riser plus token into yazi play into that potential ash that they have and then go from go to the line that we did so that's a big decision you have to make with this hand and then also do you want to end on chow fang blackout or chi shout uh blackout adara or if you do make that play don't end on adara because you have plenty of other options and we already have adara anyways so instead you could end on like maybe vashuda something different in the grave or you could go ahead and use Adara and add something back like the Yazi or the Ashina but that doesn't really do as much either at this current juncture so probably Vishuda would be better also more defense so the opponent can't just attack over it so a couple of different lines of play you can make with that hand but definitely a good hand whenever you have you know multiple tanies and a tuner it's going to be a pretty good hand Alright, so for this hand, this is really good. We've got Small World, Ogre, two copies of Enchantress, and Ashina. Uh, a couple plays here. I think what we really need in this hand to work, what would be ideal, would be a Red Rose Dragon. Uh, and so we can use Small World to do just that. However, you don't want to start with Small World because if it gets Ashed, you just don't get the Red Rose. And so instead, I think it'd be better to start with the Enchantress to try and bait that Ash Blossom first. So start by activating Enchantress effect, banish it. If it gets Ash, let's say it gets Ash, yeah. Or Belled, whatever, that's fine. Now from here, we could just activate our Small World. And then, so this is the hand. Again, let's say that the Enchantress got Ashed. 
If it doesn't get ass, we just wombo combo all over their ass and then we win. Cause like that's, you know, right? Ashina, Red Rose? Well, that's just broken. But in this case, let's say we get ashed. We activate the small world. We want to get to a Red Rose Dragon. We've got a couple of different options here. Uh, we could bridge using the Enchanter since we can't use the effect anymore. We could also bridge using the Ghost Ogre. This would be good because it keeps the, you know, er, keeping this would be good because it keeps the Adventure Engine in the loop so we have better follow up. Ogre is obviously good for more disruption. Depending on the matchup, that's a decision that you'll have to make. Small World is a very uh, skillful card to use. You gotta choose very wisely what you're keeping and what you're searching. And so I think, and so I think with this play, we want to keep the ogre because obviously uh, we can't use this this turn. Ogre is more defense on the opponent's turn, but also if our play gets stopped, we could always just normal summon the ogre, worst case scenario, and then uh, make a play from there. And so we can banish. Let's try to fit everything in the frame. So small, we're gonna banish the enchanters from our hand. We are gonna bridge two red rose that we want to add to our hand and there are a couple different things that we could do to make this work so one they're both level three so we could use a level three monster but most of the level threes in this deck are hand traps and they all have 1800 defense which uh, matches the red rose and so we can't do enchantress hand trap red rose but because of that defense we can do enchantress and then banish a copy of uh, moyi and then add the, the uh, Rose Dragon because Enchantress and Moyi are both water. That's the one thing they have in common. And then Moyi and Red Rose both have 1800 defense. So that's their bridge. That's definitely an option. Another thing that we could do that would maybe be a little bit easier is we could go from Enchantress to a copy of, let's see, where is it? We could go Stana and then Stana can get us to Let's see, where is it? To a copy of Adara. And then we'll have Ashina Adara. That would be the exact same combo that we had in that last hand. Uh, but for the sake of example, you're gonna go to the Red Rose as previously planned. So, banishing out the Moyi. But yeah, uh, Small World is really good in this deck. It's just very complicated to use. You have to make sure that you're bridging things properly and don't like, like don't get wrecked on it. So these both get banished face down. So we've got two, two banished enchantresses right now. Not ideal. However, it is still, we're still in a very good position because we have Ashina Red Rose as well as the Ogre in hand. So the play here is special summon the Ashina, normal summon the Red Rose. This is exactly the combo that I showed off in the combo video. Definitely check out the link in the description, also in the YouTube cards. But what we'll do first is go into our copy of Baron. Activate the Red Rose effect. Red Rose will get us to our Rocks Rose as well as to our Basil Rose shoot. I'm going to search both at the same time to save some time. So we're going to get to the Basil Rocks Rose. So Rocks Rose, activate the Basil, bring back the Red Rose, link the Rocks Rose and the Red Rose into a copy of Needle Fiber. Hockey Fibrax. Hockey Fibrax will add out our copy of Despot 001. And now we will link Despot and Hockey Fibrax into Auroradon, which will summon three tokens. Trigger the Despot again. I'm just gonna leave it on board because it's coming back anyways. Now from here, we got a lot of options. If we want to set up some type of follow-up, I think Riser Dragon is definitely the way to go over making a Herald. Now it's just a question of what to send with the Riser Dragon. We could send Enchantress, but we've already got two uh, Banished Enchantresses. And so getting to the, the Adventure Engine in this case is actually not as strong as a follow-up as you would think, because we only got that one resolution of Enchantress. So that's only one more right that we're searching. That's one more token. 
and after that it's just griffin riders for discards that's not that good however if we send snow uh snow blackout also gives us one really really good turn and so i think that is the way to go because it also gives us more uh defense as well because we also only have the one ghost ogre in hand so what we're gonna do first is go two tokens and despot into a copy of riser dragon riser will send a copy of snow to the grave this will make riser dragon level three so what we have to do now is activate ashina's effect banish ashina from the grave because we have a token on board and then with ashina's effect we're going to summon out stana which is a level four uh tinny monster synchro the riser dragon and the stana into a copy of Yazi. Next we use Baron, pop the Yazi. Yazi effect will trigger, summoning out our copy of where is he or she? Taya. Activate Taya's effect, banishing out the Yazi to summon a Sword Soul token. And now Sword Soul token and Taya will get us to hmm. Yeah, this is the play. Could go into Chi Shao. And we can do chain link one Chi Shao to Taya. Let's see, so we already have, let's see. Let me take a look at the grave really quick. So I'm not getting mixed up. Yeah, we wanna get Adara to grave. So we are gonna send that to the grave with Taya. And then we're gonna search our copy of Blackout. And so this is the graveyard right now, got the snow and a ton of other cards. And so we'd be ending our turn with one, two, three, and snow would be the fourth interruption on the opponent's turn. And also, wait, one, two, three, four, and five interruptions on the opponent's turn. And on our next turn, we're gonna have that snow to banish the blackout and the Taya, which gets us a sword soul token and then also Adara add back Taya, normal summon the Taya, another sword soul token. We end up with a bunch of monsters, a bunch of tokens, tuners, and we can do whatever we want to clear the opponent's board and put game on board. So very good follow-up, plenty of disruptions in different zones as well. So if our opponent has a dark ruler or a droplets, you know, good luck. Like sure they can deal with these three. We still got the ogre, we still, or wait, not this. Uh, but we still got the ogre, we still have blackout, and we still have snow. So even if the opponent has a droplets or a dark ruler, they'd have to play through three disruptions. Insane. We've got right, blackout, small world, Vishuda, and basil rose shoot. So this hand looks not the best. It looks like we drew two bricks. However, we also have right, small world, Vishuda. So the rest of the hand is actually really, really good. And so once again, we can use this small world to get exactly where we need to be. It's just gonna be a matter of uh, baiting our opponent's hand traps out. And so what we wanna do is, we, yeah, we've got a couple of options. We really just need a tuner. The best tuner in the deck is Red Rose. And the way we get to Red Rose is bridging through Vishuda. Now, what we wanna make sure we don't lose to is one Ash Blossom uh, and two Ghost Ogre. Cause Ghost Ogre on Halk would just end this, this whole hand. And so, uh, I think the play to start off with would be the right. That way, worst case scenario, if we had to, yeah, if right, I guess nothing stops right. Yeah, nothing stops right, but if Fateful gets stopped, then, like if Fateful gets ashed, it would mean that we can activate Small World successfully. If Fateful gets Ogre, that's fine. We still have Token, and then we can just uh, Small World into Red Rose once again and have play from there. And so, yeah, I think we definitely start with the right of Adamasir. This will get us to our token. It will also get us to Fateful Adventure. Uh, not this Fateful. I have a collector rare that I prefer to use first because I am bougie. So, uh, collector rare Fateful. I need to get a second one. If you have one for trade or sale, uh, DM me. So, Fateful. And again, from here, this is where we want to bait that Ash Blossom out. So we're going to activate Fateful Effect. 
ideally, like, there's nothing we want to discard here, but we can discard the Basil Rose Shoot. It's just a way to test for Ash Blossom if they have it. If not, then we're good. So, activate uh, Fateful Adventure. Let's say that goes through. Search for Griffin. And then we can just discard the Basil Rose Shoot. Something else we could do is just add Enchantress, discard Enchantress, and then search another right. That will be an option just for next turn. But Griffin's a good play too. Um, yeah, Griffin's, Griffin's actually solid. It just would be an extra monster on board, which is okay. Hmm. Yeah, now that I think about it. Yeah, so if you have like token Griffin and then you make help with one of them, like the other monster doesn't do anything. Like it just is an extra monster on board while you do your despot play. And in that regard, it's a little less than ideal. The other thing is that you could small world away the griffin into red rose keeping the vashuda in hand allowing you to go for moyi and then moyi can draw you into maybe a hand trap or something more valuable that's another option or the same thing with enchantress like search enchantress discard basil small world away the enchantress that's a play uh, let me just think if griffin does bridge into red rose um so griffin is level seven so yeah it does it definitely does because you go to any you go to vashuda actually vashuda is dark and that bridges with red rose like that so yeah, this is, this is definitely the play, I think. So we have, let's clean up a little bit. Token, Fateful. This is the hand, activate the small world. The opponent does not ash it because if they had ash, they should maybe ash the Fateful Adventure. Because in their mind, it's like if I summon this Griffin, their ash is useless. So if they have ash, you just ash Fateful. So here they clearly don't have ash or ogre. So activate the small world, small world will banish griffin face down out of the hand griffin bridges to vishuda because they are both level seven with completely different attributes types and stats and then we will add red rose to hand because red rose is dark and completely different stats and types uh, just thinking if this is if this is the best play here because it could just also get a um, an Adara, and Adara can just be the tuner to go uh, despot play, and then Adara can add back a Taya or something. So that wouldn't be bad either. We don't have to waste the red roots here. Like it doesn't hurt, I guess, but there's not much it does for us. Because we're just linking it away. We're not synchroing into anything. We could synchro into Yazi right here, but yeah, it just doesn't do anything. So maybe red roots is not the play here. I think instead we just go for Adara. Yeah, that's just a better tuner to get in the grave. Because that's all it's going. We can still bridge in the exact same way. I don't really mind banishing a Vashuda. Or a Griffin Rider, actually, because Griffin Rider is... I mean, we, pl we play two in this deck. So this is fine. I am perfectly okay with this. So we've got Vashuda, Blackout, Adara in hand. Griffin Rider and Vashuda get banished face down. Small World resolves and goes to the graveyard. From here, we special summon Adara. We still have two unknowns in hand as well, and so uh, the opponent might be hesitant to do things because we could also just normal summon stuff. Have not normal summoned. And so from here, we can just go token and Adara into our Halky Fibrax. Check the grave once more, nothing really in there. Uh, what we could do is Chain link one Halky Fibrax, chain link two Needle Fire, er, <laughs> chain link two Fateful Adventure. And this protects us from like any hand trap on it. But once again, if they had Asher Ogre, they would have used that Asher Ogre. But it's something to keep in mind as we resolve the effect. Go for that Despot 001. Link these up into our copy of Aurorodon. Summon out the boys. Three tokens, Despot Effect, Revive Itself. Uh, we don't have Ashna in Grave, so our options are a little bit limited here. The only tuner we have access to is the 001. If we had another Hand Trap, we'd have another that we could summon, but in this case, this is the best we can do. So we gotta go straight into that Yazi. Now from here, I, oh, I forgot to search the Draco back. I'm tripping.
doesn't really matter for this hand, but you know, when you activate effect, you, you gotta resolve it. But let's see. Activate a Rorodon's effect. We will tribute the token, destroy the Yazi. Yazi effect will get out Mo Yi from deck. Uh, actually, in retrospect, there was maybe a better play, or maybe not, actually, yeah. Yeah, never mind. I was gonna say we could've went Riser, and Riser dump something. Like, a, Riser could dump a level 3, so it's a level 4 tuner, and then we could just make Yazi that way, and then tribute a Roradon itself. However, there's no level 3 that I really want to send to the grave. I could dump Enchantress, but we already have Fateful up on board, and so it's, you know, that doesn't really do much for us. I guess it does in case the Fateful gets cleared. So yeah, maybe that is the move. So if we go back a couple of steps, we're still gonna go Mo Yi, but if we just go back to this step, uh, I'll set Mo Yi aside. Now we'll just put it back in the deck, whatever. But when we were at this point, what we could also do is go Yeah, this is definitely a little bit better. Go Riser. Set this up better for next turn, at least. Riser hit Enchantress. And then Riser is now level 4, plus level 3 Mecha Phantom Beast token. Gets us to the Yazi. Aurodon Tribute itself, pop the Yazi. Then that gets us to the Moi, which I shuffled into the deck. So that gets us into the Moi. Activate Moi's effect. Again, reveal the blackout because it's gonna get set on the board. Uh, they're gonna know it's blackout. However, the opponent has no idea about the Vashuda. We don't wanna give away free information. So reveal the blackout. That gets us our Sword Soul token. Moi Sword Soul token gets us to a copy of we could get really greedy here and go for like Baxia and then uh, Baxia Revive Adara, go Chao Fang Blackout. Or we could just go Chi Shao Search Taya for a follow up next turn. Both are actually not bad. Uh, I wish I could see the draw before doing this. I think it might be better to go for the Chao Fang play just so that we at least get another hand trap so that we're not just passing on like blackout Chi Shao, because again that gets that gets answered by like Vashuda. That gets answered by so many different things this format. Like, oh just ending on that maybe is not ideal. So let's go back see. It's a little greedy, but let's go for it. Uh we'll do Mo Yi, Mo Yi effect. I think I shuffled, but we'll just cut one more time. Draw nib. Sure. And we can Let's see, we have a second Fateful in deck, so it's fine if we Baxia destroy Fateful, add back Adara, and then this go into Chao Fang. We already revealed the blackout, so setting it doesn't say much, but it does give us multiple disruptions. We have one, whatever this searches us two, we've got the Nib three, and We've got the Enchantress next turn for the follow-up, as well as the Adara. So yeah, this this is solid. This is a solid. This is a solid hand. Again, the other option would have been instead of Baxia going for Chi Shao. And then Chi Shao would just search. Did I pass it? Yeah, there we go. Would search Taya as follow up. And then we would keep the Fateful Adventure on board. So, with the other play, we have three disruptions. We'd have like the Nib, the Blackout, and whatever we search with Chao Fang. Here we still have three. We've got Nib, Chi Shao, Blackout. So it's just Chi Shao versus Random Hand Trap. Random Hand Trap is better than Chi Shao, I think. However, in terms of follow up, Taya is a lot better than 
no Taya. So this is probably the play. The other cool thing is because we have Draco back in hand, well, I guess we have Enchantress too, but we could equip uh, Draco back to a Sword Soul token and then bounce something like that and then synchro away the Sword Soul token. That's always really cool. This is just a really good follow-up hand because like Vishuda bounce, Draco back bounce, Taya play, Enchantress play. A lot of plays here. So this is a really good hand. The defense is a little weak, but the follow-up is strong. But let me know what play you guys think would have been better there. Would it have better to end on the Chaofang Blackout or Shishao Blackout better? Alright, final hand. Let's see what we got. Damn, this again. Crazy. Alright, so on our final hand, we don't have an amazing hand, but we do have Adventure Engine. We do have Tuner. We've got Griffin. This is obviously not ideal, but it is good enough. I know one fear that a lot of people have with this deck, especially with like large decks in general is the issue of bricking but when i say this deck can play with any hand it can play with any hand and so what i do with this hand is go ahead and start by activating the right see if this baits a hand trap if it does fine this is needle fiber but if not uh we are in pretty good position if not so activate the enchantress this will search out our copy of right we're gonna activate right right will get us to a token as well as to our fateful adventure wow haven't even used vessel once that's crazy i used to draw that card all the time i miss those days but uh from here what we can do is let's see now because we have the draco back in hand this gives us a few different options because one we can use this to chain block another thing though is if we don't search it it might give away the information that we do have it in our hand and that's not something we want to do um yeah i think what we want to do instead is try to use adventure to maybe bait for let's see if they had ash they ash this if they have ogre are we afraid of ogre well ogre on needle fiber or auroradon would be really really tough for us to play through because the hand is so weak however yeah we'd want to yeah we, we can test for Ogre with this, or we can Chain Block Ogre with this. Tricky, tricky. Or yeah, let's just do both actually. So, activate Fateful Adventure. Use the effect. If they got Ogre, they've got it. We know they don't have Ash. This gets us to a second copy of Enchantress. And... I know you might be thinking the play is to discard the Draco back, but that just wastes the effect for no reason. Instead, we can discard the Enchantress, and then that will, uh... Oh, actually. Okay, this is... More complicated than I thought. So, we've got a couple options here. So, I'll show you guys both. What we could do on one hand is discard the Draco back. That's the obvious play, right? Then what we do is we summon out Griffin, special summon Enchantress, and then normal summon Valor, and we've got Halk plus Griffin and Token. So this means we're going uh, full combo without accessing our 001, so we're not doing the Auroradon play here. That is always good because that means on your follow-up play, you can do the Auroradon play. So this means you have a really, really good follow-up. The downside to this, though, is you burn every single card in your hand through the combo. So good combo, good follow-up, if you get that far, but no other cards at all. So that's... A little spooky uh also the i guess you do have hand trap protection because you have the uh griffin on board if you're forced to use it then you just do despot combo instead uh the other option though that i was thinking initially was let's see so this is hand draco backs in hand what i was also thinking was we discard the enchantress and then let's see special griffin summon valor equip valor to token token and valor can into can equal halky fibrax but we can do halk chain link one uh, or i'm sorry equip this to the uh the griffin rider that's what i meant to say yeah Ooh, weird equip this to the griffin rider pretty sure it can do that right yeah equip only to a monster control so equip draco back to griffin rider and then these equal halky fibrax chain link one halk chain link two draco back re-equipping to token 
so that chain blocks your Hulk from Ash Ogre. Again, we know they don't have Ash or Ogre, but if they were holding it, now they can't use it. And then Hulk goes through, and then we combo from there. This play also has the exact same issue as the one before, so we're gonna burn through our entire hand anyways. And so, I guess it doesn't quite necessarily matter which one in terms of like setting up for follow-ups, because we're gonna get Enchantress and Grave anyways, we're burning our whole hand anyways, the only difference is uh, how we get there. And so with one, we can chain block the Hulk, with the other, we're gonna have Griffin up while we resolve Hulk. So these are actually the exact same thing. However, the first play is better because if they don't have the interruption on the Hulk, then we don't have to use the uh, Aurora Down play. If they do have it, then we will, but you know, if they don't, they don't. So I think what we discard here yeah, we're at this point. Uh, we searched this with Fateful. We'll discard the Draco back, yeah. Use Draco back effect, equip to token. Doesn't really mean anything, but from here, special Griffin, Enchantress special out, normal summon, and then make our Needle Fiber with these two. Needle Fiber can summon out Red Rose. We never want to not have a negate on board. And so, oh, and once again, if they did do something, we just chain Griffin, shuffle it back into the deck, summon out Despot, and then Despot combo. But if they don't, then these will equal a Baron. Red Rose will summon out the Rocks Rose and the Basil. Just gonna go ahead and search that Basil now. Let's see, Basil and. Rocks Rose. These will go into, let's see, Yazi. And let's see, this is hand. We don't have to use the Basil Rose shoot, which is good. And again, because we still have Despot in deck, you know, this plus any monster equals next turn follow up. So that's really good. Baron effect, pop the Yazi. Yazi effect will get us to Moyi. We could go for uh, Taya. Taya can dump Adara, and Adara would be really good for adding Taya back next turn, especially because we can use this to send Riser to send Snow, and Riser blackout Adara Snow is like good. We've seen it before in different combos, so that's always an option. But I do like Moyi just drawing into more cards because this combo is using every single card we have. We definitely would like to. Uh, definitely would like to have more cards and this is a deck that does better with more cards so Yazi summon out Moyi Moyi effect reveal the blackout that gets us to sword soul token sword soul token and the Moyi will equal our chi Shao. oh we could actually make the super greedy play and go ooh yeah we could go super greedy play and go Taya Baxia and then Taya, Dump Moyi, Revive Mo. Yeah, that's super greedy, but let's go for it. So we'll do that a little bit differently. So off of the Yazi, we'll go for Taya. Let's get greedy. So we'll go Taya, banish the Yazi to get Sword Soul token. Sword Soul token plus the Taya will get us to Baxia, Taya effect, dump the Moyi to the graveyard, activate Baxia effect, destroy the Fateful Adventure to, and once again, this is fine because we have Enchantress in Grave anyways. And so we can always use Enchantress to search another right, and then right gets us to the second Fateful next turn. So this is completely fine. Revive the Moyi, reveal the blackout, Another Sword Soul token. Sword Soul token plus Blackout equals... Chi Shao. This would be better if we had Ashina. So we can go Chao Fang, but... Uh, hmm. Actually? Yeah, this does nothing. The only difference is this gets us like an extra Baxia. Because we can't search anything because we've gone through both of our Sword Soul monsters as well as having Blackout in hand. Okay, so this was just a waste of time. So, <laughs> go back a little bit to the initial play. 
yeah, the initial play was this. So, no ye revealed a blackout. Sorry for the confusion, but you guys should get what I'm saying at this point. Same thing, no ye reveal blackout. Summon out token. These go into Chi Shao. Uh, we can do Chi Shao 2, searching the Taya. Mo Yi 1 to draw. Let's shuffle before we draw. Yeah, doing the greedy play literally gets us nothing because we don't even have an Ashina. So that's. Like, we have no other way of getting the Chao Bang. Ooh. Bad shuffling skills. Alright. Resolve Mo Yi. Whatever. That's fine. And then we pass on this. So we've got no hand traps, but we do have uh, Baron, Chi Shao, Blackout. We have Fateful for next turn. We've got Enchantress for next turn. We've got a Griffin Rider for next turn. We've got some plays. We also still have Despot in deck too, so that's really good. Uh, with the Halky Fibrax, we've got some options. You could go Riser, but what do we dump with Riser? We've already got, you know, the adventure package. We could go Tinnies, but Tinnies do nothing without tokens, but we can get tokens. But then what Tinnies do we summon to go with them? So maybe not those. Uh, maybe Riser gets in Snow. That'd be pretty good. Snow Blackout's always a good combination. Or we could go Hulk into Formula. What would that get us? Hulk into Formula would get us draw Ghost Bell. And then after we use Chi Shao. No, yeah, we can't synchro these away because that conflicts with the blackout. Uh, that's less than ideal. It's also one of the reasons I've been thinking about cutting formula because when you have this setup, you cannot both synchro with this and use blackout unless you synchro these into like... You can go Sinister Long Young, uh, Chishing Long Young, and then use the effect and then blackout, but like when you're playing real games, I think it's a little bit naive to assume that you can sequence your disruptions in any way you please especially when they are so specific such as like uh negate an on-field monster effect or destroy two opponents cards it doesn't always work out that way and so the other option would be going into chen ying that's also a play but you know questionable at least we drew the ghost spell off of it but either way we've got multiple disruptions and really good follow-up so I hope this shows you guys a little bit of what the Brave Tinny deck can do. If you're interested in a deck list, definitely check out the profile that I've already done on the channel. A link will be right here on your screen, in the description, in the cards, everywhere. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next one.